now that we have knowledge about the sigmoid activation function and the decision boundaries let's move on to the next part that is cost function for logistic regression if you recall in linear regression we had the gradient descent similarly in the case of logistic regression we write a prediction function so a prediction function in logistic regression basically returns the probability of our observation being positive that is true or yes we call this class 1 now you can see from this graph as the value gets closer to 1 the confidence level is higher and the cost is lower similarly if our class is y is equals to 0 we see that towards y equals to 0 the cost is minimum and if we predict the class 0 as 1 we see that the cost is very high and therefore this is the graph for it so let's go with this equation j of theta equals to 1 by m summation of i goes from 1 to m cost of h of theta x comma y of i now this j of theta is our cost function now you must be having a question about why didn't we use the same cost function as in terms of the linear regression so basically our prediction here is non-linear because of the sigmoid transformation that we saw so squaring this prediction as we do in mean squared error results in a non-convex function with many local minimums if a cost function has many local minimums the gradient descent will not find an optimal global minimum that is it will not converge hence instead of mean square error we use this particular cost function the name of this is cross entropy it is also known as logarithmic loss cross entropy loss can be divided into two separate functions based on for the class y equals to 1 and for the class y equals to 0 now the benefits of taking the logarithm reveal themselves when you look at the cost function graphs for y equals to 0 and y equals to 1. These are smooth monotonic functions. That is, they are always increasing or always decreasing. And this in turn makes it easy for us to calculate the gradient and minimize the cost.